G'day everybody, uh, welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Um, today I want to bring to you and talk about this Sig Sauer Tango 6 rifle scope. It's actually been sent to us by the guys at OSA, which are a company that are an importer of lots of bits and pieces. It's actually um, outdoor sporting agencies, um, but they are um, distributed through, all through Australia. So most gun shops, that sort of stuff, deal with them. So they have these sort of products and they're looking at sending us some more products to look at and do the same sort of thing, um, introduce to people, uh, that sort of thing. So um, this is the Tango 6 rifle scope, like I said, um, it's a 5 to 30, so in a 56mm reticle, 56mm objective lens, um, it's a nice big scope, impressive looking scope, um, there's some features that are very good in it, and there's a new feature that I want to talk about their scope that, that these Tango 6 scopes have, which is called the level plex. Now I'll get into all that in some more detail as we go, but um, the overview of the scope first. Um, it's a first focal plane scope. So yes, it's not what I tend to use for my ELR shooting, but still the, what most people use for long range shooting, certainly for your precision rifle series, certainly for a tactical scope, then the MOA, then the, the first focal plane is a better way to go. This is also in MRAD, um, we, but you can get this scope in, in um, MOA as well. Um, there's actually, I think, three different reticles at least. There's five different versions of this scope, um, but this is the um, one that I've gone through and looked at. The other thing with this scope in the, in the things that are with the first focal plane, and it's only got 60 MOA of um, elevation. Well, that's, um, I've forgotten the exact number, 24 mil, I think, um, or 20 mil but um, it's not super big on its elevation. Once again, perfectly suited to the normal long range sort of stuff, really a scope designed to shoot from as little as 100 yards out to the probably 1200, 1500 yards. This scope's gonna do the job well in most packages you're gonna set it on. So very good for that. Those couple of points are not quite suited to my ELR. Let's carry on with what I have found. Um, the, the level plex side of it is like I said, is a thing that's a, a new bit of design and a little bit along the lines of a video I spoke about recently where some of the electronic features that can be put into the view so you can actually see things um, and help you with using a rifle scope. The Levelplex is a system that eliminates the need for a bubble level. Um, what it actually does, and I've got some footage of that, um, you turn the system on and then it has the two little arrows on either side that you can see telling you that this side's down needs to go up or this side's down needs to go up and when you've got them when you've got no light showing it means you've got it level now the system's operated by a button on the side here you press that to turn it on and then operates for a certain amount of time before it turns off you've also got some other controls you can hold that button you can pre press it twice there's other things you can do to change how sensitive it is whether it's one degree or it's half a degree um, there's a few things you can mess with on that score but that's the level plex system and i think it's a great idea um, the rest of the scope is all as you would expect actually for a scope that's moving up into a tier one bracket i wouldn't quite call it there but it's a very good quality scope um, the 5 to 30, like I said, in its, um, in its power range. Um, very nice and very clear, very well knurled um, system. And you can see it's actually spinning on the outside here. So you can really see neatly where these two lines go either side of is exactly where you've got your power to. That worked very nicely, very nice grip, and I wouldn't feel that, I don't see the need. There's probably a system you can screw in there to have an extra lever on it, but I don't feel the need for that at all. It's very nice and grippy, works really well. Um, the, the other thing that I've checked, the reading I've done and, from, and what I checked, the tracking side of things, both with how the reticle works and with the tracking on the turrets was very accurate and worked like it's supposed to. Forward in the turret side of it, nice, once again, well knurled tarlets, nice system. What these guys have done in the way of rather than running caps for knocking your adjustments or things like that, they have a lockdown system. You pull the cat, you pull the turret up, then you can actually rotate it to wherever you want. You could leave it up there while you're finding your shot, all that side of things. But if you want to actually make sure it's where it's set, um, you actually put it down, it locks down. Obviously more so for the PRS guys, um, in, the, in the windage side of things, they're just going to use wind calls, they're going to lower the place. You can lock that in and then that's not going to be knocked, that's going to work nicely. 
the actual feel of the turret's quite nice. They are discernible clicks. Um, they work quite well on that score. And like I said, in the tracking side of things, it's worked nice. I've been very happy with it. Um, over the other side here, it took me a tiny bit to get used to. Um, like I said, you've got the button to push. You actually really, it is quite a firm button, so you're not going to knock it accidentally. The quite a firm button you have to press to turn on the level system. Um, the first dial out here is actually for your um, reticle illumination. Uh, very nice and bright. You can actually bright enough to use in the daytime. Um, obviously good for nighttime as well, but if you want that sort of thing, then that's nice and controlled. The next one in here, which is the firm and knurling on the inside, is the parallax adjustment. Um, and the clarity, I could get it very clear. Um, as for glass quality, I'm not a person who really tries to assess that too much. As I said previously, once it gets to a certain level, I'm happy. Um, I found the glass very similar quality, probably not quite in the same place, but very similar to the likes of my Night Force scopes that I use. Um, it might not be quite there, but really I couldn't tell a lot of difference. It was very nice and clear, really good, worked nicely. I know they are um, Japanese lenses, I know they have their multi coatings and that sort of stuff. There's always little differences and bits and pieces between one scope and another scope, but I found it good. I found it comparable um, and Worked really nicely. Um, this scope, they're obviously very striking looking with the way they're set up, with the way they've done their, their, um, their insignias and bits and pieces, and obviously with the grey and black. I think there is a full black option, um, but the grey and black side of it is, is a very striking looking thing. You do a little bit of colour coding on your rifle, they're going to look great. Um, and this one came with the um, two piece, but their um, mounts, and I would say, or the rings on them, and they have got this funny little angle to them on the front here. Listen, I don't think there's a lot in that. It looks nice, I'd have to say that. Um, and that's probably where I leave it. They're very striking looking. The whole scope, the whole package comes together as a striking looking unit. So anyway, as my overview of it, the bit I've done with it, I've sort of done a week of messing with it. Um, I did a bit of footage through the reticle, which you can see that side of things. I've been very happy with it. Mentioned the reticle there. I should say that the... Um, it is first focal plane. One of the deals I don't like first focal plane in my ELR shooting is that they, when you, when you zoom right in, your reticle gets very big. This does exactly that. So there, there is a thing that, that would hold me back on that score. But what they've done to, to rectify some of that issue is that they have a very small center dot. So the reticle stops, you have a clear center patch in the middle of the reticle, um, and inside that is a very fine dot. So up at full power, up at 30 power, that dot is still pretty small. It's actually able to, you can see your target around that. It's not blanking over the target. So quite a smart option, work nicely. And back down on, on the finest power, back down at five, being six times of actual um, magnification or the difference of six times from five to 30. Coming back down to the um, five power, you've got a very small reticle, but they've done it so that it's actually still discernible down at that very fine level. So I think it's a great option. I think it's all put together really well. Um, it's a scope that if it was in second focal plane, I would certainly have that. It's a little bit nicer for me, but for people shooting in the normal long range, um, certainly people using the first MOA and a lot of people, sorry, the first, um, uh, first focal plane, um, a lot of people prefer that sort of scope. This is a real option. Price-wise, I don't get too much into it. We're over in Australia. There's all sorts of different things with our dollar difference and with how things get into the country, it's very hard to compare. But from what I can see in looking around the place, it's very comparable and competitive with the range of scopes are sitting into. So listen, it's something I just had the chance to be able to have a look at, have a little play with, and I thought I'd show people. The Levelplex idea is the thing that really attracted me to look at it. Um, it's one of the new features that I think scopes are going to come more and more out with over the next few years um, and they're certainly leading the, the crowd in, in with this idea um, and I think it's a really good idea. It's, a, it's well executed, works nicely from what I found it was very accurate. Um, I really did in the fine control you really could use it in that sort of level. It takes a little bit of getting used to like most bits and pieces but once you got it all straight you could be confident it was straight. Um, yeah I was really happy with it. Anyway, that's, a, um, that's an overview for it. Like I said, this is, comes in through the, in Australia through OSA, um, the America side of things and the rest of the world, then you're looking at your normal distributors for your SIG products. 
But um, SIG have done a good job here. Yeah, it's a nice go. Anyway, guys, thanks for checking us out. I hope that was of worth some information for you. Um, and Willem, catch us next time.